Namaste. I, Preeti Pranav Jain, welcome you on our next episode of the Dil Se Dialogue, an amazing initiative by BVSS for inspiring women entrepreneurs and bringing women role models in front. Let me start with my favorite shloka. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Lakshmi Rupena Sansita. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Vidya Rupena Sansita. First line simply signifies the feminine energy that reflects wealth. And second one emphasizes the feminine energy that symbolizes knowledge. And today we have a very special guest who specializes in both these aspects, finance and knowledge. Yes, she is a finance journalist. Isn't it amazing? She's none other than Ms. Aarti Krishnan. Let me try to introduce her in lesser words. Very difficult though. She is a cost accountant and MBA finance by qualification. And as a profession, she has been writing about the entire gamut of financial products and regulations for over 25 years now. She was the head of research bureau of the business line and was editor of its portfolio section for seven long years. Currently playing a role of consulting editor at business line and writes on the economy, market, etc. for both the business line and the Hindu. She is the head of investment products at Prime Investors and a member of SEBI's MF Advisory Committee. For her pioneering work in writing on financial services, she has been awarded the Sri Ram Sanlam Award for Excellence in Financial Journalism three times. A very warm welcome, Aarti, on our Dil Se Dialogue. Thank you for that elaborate introduction, Preeti, and uh, namaste to all the viewers there. Uh, I thank uh, BVSS for giving me this opportunity to participate in Dilse Dialogue, an excellent initiative to showcase uh, women who've risen to the top of their career. So uh, since Preeti is always uh, already given a very elaborate introduction, I think we'll jump straight into the subject. Yes, and thanks for taking our time from your super hectic schedule. Uh, let me first ask, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thankfully, I hope uh, I and my family and the country has come out of this COVID scare to a fair extent. So I think things are improving on every front. So it's yes. a good time, actually. Yes. 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 And yes. as you said, we should jump on the topic because we have really very little time to uh, talk and learn so much from you. Let me begin with the very first question because I, when I was reading about your profile, I became so curious that being a financial journalist is an unusual career choice. And how did you get into this field? So the best word to describe how I got into it is serendipity by fate mm -hmm. or luck or whatever it is. So in 1994, when I just completed my MBA and from JNTU in Hyderabad, and I'd also completed my cost accounting uh, degree by then. I was keen to be a consultant or an investment banker, like many young people of those days. But uh, the camp when ca campus placements came, uh, it was not a very good year for campus placements. And so uh, we had very few people coming to the campus. Uh, the homegrown ICFA Institute, uh, there was a chartered financial analyst institute in Hyderabad at that time, which came to recruit financial writers for their magazine, which was called Analyst. The pay was modest, but it turned out to be one of the most amazing workplaces with colleagues who are young, who are passionate about finance and writing. We used to work uh, very long hours, like 12 or 13 hours in the initial days, but it never felt like work because it was such fun. It was a startup atmosphere. So mentored by my first boss, uh, Vinod Kumar, I developed a passion for writing and for tracking uh, and analyzing companies, mutual funds, etc. I was also extremely lucky at that time that I was given the mutual fund beat and the first private sector mutual funds in India were just starting out at that time. So I got a ringside view of the industry right from the time it started out. So that has held me in great stead throughout my career and it has really helped me to uh, uh, 
uh, track the entire uh, investment, uh, gamut of investment products through market cycles. In a couple of years after I worked at ICFI, uh, my father moved to Chennai. I heard that the Hindu group is launching its first financial newspaper, Business Line. I applied there and I was lucky enough to get a seat in their research bureau, which was basically made up of CEAs, uh, cost accountants, MBAs in finance. Again, the job was about tracking companies, writing investment recommendations. And I really took to it uh, like a duck to water. So uh, this job has since uh, really been my passion. And I've never felt any impulse to move away from this profession because it involves constant learning, meeting people, um, keeping up with the twists and turns of the stock markets and all the regulatory developments. Uh, it's been a great 25 years, I must say. Wow. Such long career span because the way you are talking about your career journey from the when you wanted to become an investment banker to this financial writer and then research bureau in Chennai, such long 25 years, you really look very, very passionate about your work. Um, who can make you uh, tired with this work? No one. <laughs> and But you know, such huge, big career. I usually a woman has to make tough choices between That's career right. and family. So did you also face any such choices and how did you overcome that? So at the beginning of my career, the choice was not at all tough. I was very clear in my mind that uh, building my career is my top priority and not marriage, actually. So uh, my father, being from a conservative background, my father said all the usual things about uh, my being too absorbed in my job and my being uh, uh, too uh, careless about uh, uh, looking or uh, learning the homemaking skills. And my job involved quite a bit of traveling because to interview people, etc. I used to go to Bombay, etc. So when my father started looking out for a suitable partner through the traditional route, uh, I made up my mind to have a frank chat with my husband-to-be and to explain that uh, I was a very career-oriented person and also quite an independent character. So uh, I, I also wanted to say that I will be traveling on my own and wouldn't quit my career very easily. So my husband Krishnan was from a traditional background in Deep South, but surprisingly, he shared my views. The only quality which he's, he was looking for in a wife was independence. And so we hit it off very well from the beginning. So the tough choices for me came when my when I had my first uh, child, my son, in the year 2000. And I had to wonder how I could keep up the pace of my career while looking after him. I was fortunate enough that my parents stepped in at that time and they offered to look after him for a, few, for a limited uh, number of hours every day. Uh, my employer business line also was very compassionate and they allowed me to work from home initially and after six months they allowed me to work limited hours at the office actually i'll say that period actually made me very productive and efficient because i had i would have exactly five or six hours at the office and i would have to come back home at six uh, so I would try to pack as much of work uh, into those hours without too much of chit chat and all that uh, so that I could actually get a lot done. So that was a very useful period. A second uh, tough choice came for me in 2014 May when my parents as well as my mother-in-law became a little elderly and it became difficult for them to actually uh, take care of the home responsibilities and also my son. So at that time, I took a step back from my full-time role at Businessland. I, I asked for a part-time role as an editor tutorial consultant and uh, uh, being my, my impatient self within six months I wasn't happy with doing just that so I took on an assignment at value research which is uh, one of the leading mutual fund research platforms in India I worked there then three years ago I quit value research and I joined uh, I started writing for a startup called prime investor based in Chennai so today I work for two employers that is business line as well as uh, uh, prime investor so, you know, what I'm hearing is that you have been very lucky. The serendipity continued, even finding a partner. And then you got, uh, I'll say that you got really lucky with the partner, the parent and the colleagues helping you uh, juggling between the family and the profession, because when you got the child, especially. But many women are not that lucky, Aarti. And there they have to make this choice of, uh, you know, either the career or the family. Right. As for your experience, with your experience, what advice would you give them? 
see people in your family may be supportive but uh, ultimately it is the woman who does shoulder a lot of the responsibility for raising the child or looking after parents or uh, then continuing with your work also so uh, there are periods when you're absolutely tired and you feel my god why can't i give up this thing this job which is actually acting as an additional burden on me but i feel during such periods you should somehow grit your teeth and persevere with it and i have done it many times in my life so um, last um, in the first wave of covid my mother became critically ill and she was in the icu for 65 days uh, on ventilator after that uh, we had to bring her home in a critical condition and i looked after her at home in almost an icu like situation for more than one year so that period really really tested me in terms of emotionally i would you i used to feel so tired i mean um, having to actually write for both the employers i was writing for but um, i feel persevering through such periods uh, is very important if you have to be successful if you look at all the top women today in, in india in the financial services industry we say there are so many women who are ceos in banking in uh, insurance companies etc these women are the women who have actually uh, must have gone through a lot of such personal challenges and yet have persevered with their career through these challenges without taking too many breaks i think that is what actually takes you to the top you know just sticking with your job and becoming really good at it so what i'd like to tell people women young women out there is that uh, don't give up too easily on your career because you feel the strain you can take a sabbatical or leave if you want all employers are usually open to it make yourself so indispensable to your employer that they don't want to let go of you even if you want to let go uh if you're taking a break or a sabbatical nothing wrong with it not everybody is going to have supportive parents like me or supportive uh, uh, or a family that is willing to step in so in, when you take a sabbatical uh, make sure that you remain on top of your subject and build your domain knowledge try to acquire skills during that period so that when you get back again into your career you will be more valuable than when you were before wow so what is coming time and again is the perse- uh, perseverance because perseverance yes. is the top thing and resilience and the passion in your subject and uh, yeah sometimes we really need to take a break but uh, rightly said we need to be on the top of our game then also and um, yeah we always think about our problems our difficulties and sometimes uh, tend to give up easily that we are not able to handle but all the women leaders from all across uh, different walks of the life it's not it's not only finance but each and every yeah. they are, they are, they have shown these uh, qualities right so very nicely said that and yeah i'm listening i'm learning great <laughs> and um, with this i i'm really keen to know that uh, like you said that there are some career challenges keeps happening in every every field yeah so in your career in your career of 25 years what was the most significant barrier if any and at the same time i want to know that do women face greater challenges in their leadership roles my barrier as i mentioned was my mother's illness actually which was totally unexpected see uh, for the birth of my son or for the step back i took i could plan for it because these were events i knew were coming but my mother's uh, sickness sim- simply came out of the blue and uh, uh, one day she was fine the next day she was in apollo hospital in the icu so uh, that was the most challenging period of my life in terms of barriers i don't think any people really acted as barriers to my career though there is a lot of talk of glass ceiling for women um my editors and bosses were always quite supportive of me so i didn't face that but i would say women also often set up their own psychological barriers so when a crisis crops up at home or suppose your son is getting into the 10th standard or uh, daughters uh, uh, facing a teenage uh, <laughs> crisis you all women always feel that they should be the ones to shoulder the entire responsibility so they often don't even discuss it with their family and they decide to take a step back i feel we 
should slightly move away from that to discuss these things and to see many times the family, the husband may be very willing to support you in such things and you may still be able to do a part-time role. So when additional responsibilities come up, don't assume you are the only one to solve it. Uh, second thing is, uh, I would say that um, uh, when uh, women tend to underestimate themselves at work also. So when opportunities come up, they often don't put up their hand and they feel that they are not qualified enough, etc. I think we should get over those confidence problems a bit and try to take up opportunities when they crop up. Uh, so because opportunity knocks only once and you have to really take them when they come to you. Yeah, totally agree. We, we women tend to become superhumans most of the time. So better to discuss and ask for help yeah. Yeah, yes. there to support us. But the second part of my question was like, do women face greater challenges in leadership roles? I definitely do think they do because uh, uh, as I said, it's not only in India, even globally, women do take up a disproportionate share of uh, handling household challenges, child rearing, elderly care, etc. So uh, at work also, it uh, since you have to balance work with this, it does become more challenging for women. In leadership roles specifically, uh, what I would think acts against them is uh, I, most women I know tend to underestimate themselves a little bit. And in the beginning, when you're made a leader, you tend to be very soft and very non-assertive with people, which you have to get over. If you really have to become a good leader, you have to be quite assertive. And you should be able to convey even negative feedback in a positive way without really rubbing anybody the wrong way. So... Um, that's important, I think. So assertiveness is the key. And at the same time, taking feedback in the right manner is also an art. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching one of your YouTube videos where you have mentioned about uh, managing your own DMAT account and managing your mm -hmm. finance independently, investing uh, independently apart from your partner. So what advices would you give to we women uh, investors yeah, see, often I see, often I see very successful women who have done very well at their careers, but they're still very uh, diffident about managing their own money or making their own investing decisions, and they feel that uh, their father or the husband or brother, somebody is better placed than them. Uh, I would advise against this. See, if you can handle your academics, you can juggle your job with your family, then investing or personal finance isn't such a big thing to handle. So. Uh, why I'm saying women should actually have financial independence is it works out for you in every kind of situation. So if you if you're single, it's great because then you do need to know how to manage your finances and your life independently until you retire. If you're happily married, then when you manage your finances independently, you become an equal partner in the finances of your household. Uh, and you can actually uh, relieve your husband of a bit of the burden of actually being the breadwinner of the family. So when we bought a house or when we funded our son's college degree, I was also able to chip in and they gave, that gave me a lot of satisfaction, I must say. Uh, suppose the marriage is a bit rocky, it's difficult. Uh, when you have your own separate finances, it reduces the fight that you have. <laughs> And uh, God forbid, if an unfortunate thing happens and you have to divorce or something in that case also, uh, if you have a fair grip of your finances and you're able to independent, independently manage your money, it is a big blessing in those situations. I'm understanding the benefits of uh, independently handling the finances. But at the same time, I understand that financial literacy for women is altogether a vast subject. From where to begin, we have always been dependent on our male uh, family members. And that's majority of our, in our country, majority of women we behave this way and would love to know and have another session on financial literacy with you, where you can give us small nuggets of how to invest. <laughs> but it will take a long time. <laughs> and one um, uh, out of the blue, some different question is like, I'm curious to know that how do you unplug from your such hectic busy schedule? So I really like reading. So I read a lot of fiction actually. Uh, and uh, now with Kindle, it's become very easy to download a book even at midnight and start reading it. So I do quite a bit of that. Um, I, I generally like to hang out with people. So uh, uh, I have a lot of friends. Um, 
I you also used to teach in the Asian College of Journalism. So there are a lot of students I've taught in the past. So the huge network of people that I keep interacting with of all age groups, young, old, middle. So that really keeps me going at times. And uh, uh, I also like uh, certain aspects of homemaking, like cooking. So if I got enough time, that's my retirement plan that I should brush up my cooking skills. Right now, it is restricted to watching MasterChef Australia and <laughs> enjoying other people cooking. But I do hope to actually build on these things, cooking, gardening, this kind of thing when I have a less hectic schedule in future. Mm -hmm. So nice. Uh, reading part, I totally agree. But right now, I don't read fiction, but I love reading okay. it all. And then uh, I can just imagine that such vast number of social people around you from students to various walks of life and yeah. must not get time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> So, then, you know, so much to ask, so much to learn from you, but really the time is very less. I would like to wrap up small nuggets from today's learnings. It's like you said that women often set up their own psychological barriers. It totally resonated with me because when the responsibilities come up, we don't assume, uh, we mostly take that this is our duty. We take everything on our shoulder and try to single-handedly um, take care of those. I am taking the lesson from you that when offered opportunities, jump at them. Challenges will sort themselves out. A very beautiful point made by you that make your own investing decisions right from the start of your career. I'm so glad when you said that take the responsibility in your hands, ask for help and support. And the best part is about perseverance, resilience, and keep the top of the game when you're passionate about your work. I loved it. Uh, many, many thanks, uh, uh, Aarti, for such beautiful life nuggets. I'm so inspired. I was actually completely immersed listening to you. And I have a number of uh, questions about finance, investments, etc. But I'll request all our viewers to put your queries in the comment section. And we will try our best to get the responses from Aarti. I must sure, say, I'm so happy to. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And I must thank say, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Ye dil ki baatein dil se karke maza aa gaya, Arti. Many many uh -huh. thanks for being with us today. Watch out this space for the next episode of the Dil Se Dialogue. Till then, keep investing wisely in your life and celebrate the abundance of everything in your life. Bye bye.